always a pleasure sharing content. And this week, I want to explore Lloyds of London and the transatlantic slave trade. Lloyds of London has been in existence for centuries. According to historical documents, Lloyds of London started in a coffee shop back in 1688. Today, Lloyds of London is known mainly for its banking business. However, Lloyds of London has a connection to insurance. The concept of insurance is not new, and as a matter of fact, has been in existence for centuries. The company's main purpose then was as an insurance company. By the 1730s, Lloyds of London dominated shipping insurance. This meant that Lloyds was a big player for planters and their shipment of human cargo to the Americas and the Caribbean. This meant that for over 200 years, Lloyds would play a pivotal role in the trafficking of human lives. Let me cite an example for how the enslavers protected themselves using these big companies. In August of 1781, a British ship left Ghana. The ship was called Zong, and on board were 442 enslaved people. They were captured, of course. The ship's journey took longer than expected and water ran low. The crew, fearing that they would run out of water, decided to throw 130 slaves overboard. The casting of 130 lives overboard was no big issue for slave owners. After all, they could make a claim. And so the owner made a claim regarding his merchandise. And of course, you know, it's just like today. It went to court. And consequently, in that situation, of course, the planter won. Let's face it, insurance companies are in the system to make money. The mass murder of human beings allowed another individual to profit. The reality is that Lloyds of London and other insurers in these times aided the continuation of slavery. According to one report, Lloyds businesses back then included trading commodities such as rice, wheat, and other merchandise. Also, some owners in Lloyds were heavily invested in the slave trade. Now let's get some figures. It is estimated that Lloyds had between 80 to 90% of the maritime insurance market. This is a lot. And let's not forget, from the 1640s until the 19th century, millions of enslaved Africans were transported by the vast British shipping industry. And of course, Lloyds was at the center. Let us also not forget that US also profited from selling slave insurance. And these companies were located in the United States. Presently, several institutions in the United States have benefited from this travesty to humanity. The irony of this situation is after benefiting from slavery, many of these financial institutions currently impose the highest interest rates and also have the most significant penalties on the descendants of the same people they profited from. The reality is that in the United States and England, there is a disparity between those who get good loans and those who get loans that are high in interest. The reality is that the financial system is a representation of what the historical position was before. Many businesses will articulate since the past owners of the company had a connection to slavery and are currently dead, they should not feel uncomfortable about the past. However, I'm not so sure about this. As a matter of fact, I'm sure you did not throw away your wealth in a bin or something and say, all right, you know what, we're going to have a fresh start. Therefore, the reality is that these companies continue to reap the benefits of what had taken place in history, the travesty. Lloyd's need for reckoning came in 2004 when descendants of enslaved Black Americans began exploring a multi-million dollar action suit against Lloyd's of London. The claim made against Lloyd's was that it financed the ships and forced their ancestors into slavery. This is what I find interesting. The group used DNA technology to link their ancestors to Lloyd's vessels that they had sponsored. Lloyd's followed up with their traditional denial. Of course, the first thing when we talk about that historical context of slavery, there's an issue of denial. 
let's move on. There would be a silence on the issue for another 15 years. Finally, in 2020, Lloyd's addressed its role in the transatlantic slave trade. I guess the climate was suitable, or I would say the landscape had changed. In 2020, Lloyd's of London made a statement that they were sorry for their role in the slave trade. The report stated that this period represented an appalling time and a shameful period in England's history. The murder of Joy Floyd and other black men and women across the world seemed to have caused many people to say, I cannot be silenced no more. On their website, they state that they will increase diversity in their workforce. They also claim that inclusion and diversity has always been a priority. Yes, they said that on their website. Hence, they have increased their black representation at the senior level. My question to Lloyds at this point in time and other financial institutions, claiming that diversity and inclusion is priority. Why is it blacks and minorities continue to receive high interest rates and get excluded from business loans? My message to you all, is that diversity does not reside on a piece of paper. Inclusion does not reside on a piece of paper, but in action. Much more is needed for all these institutions who profited and continue to profit from slavery. We cannot ignore what has taken place. Many times companies will come out regarding the issue of diversity and inclusion. And yes, it's a call for action, but have you changed? Have you really created a zone where you can invest in making what you did wrong right. The issue is, it's not about handouts. It's about making what was wrong right. It requires investment, not just from your personal point of view, but from a global point of view, because guess what? Slavery affected generations. It affected the Caribbean. It affected United States. It's not good enough to say, yes, we're going to hire diverse individuals. You have to have greater investments that are far reaching and will narrow and break the gap of generations to ensure that they have equal opportunity to succeed. The reality is that inclusion and diversity cannot be just done internally when you have created a global problem by ensuring planters who carried slaves to the Caribbean. So you cannot say in your own right that you're going to address it in the organization. You have to look externally. You have to look at what compounding factors you created as a result of your engagement in the structure of slavery. Yes. So when you look at your internal part and what you're going to do by having representation at senior level and so forth, that's all right too. The reality is it's just not in your organization that you need to make that change. You need to have global impact.